Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the Ra Ra Rabbit. So it's been a while since I have done a video with this backdrop. Uh, I guess when I'm doing less formal videos, if you can call my normal videos formal, um, I don't know, I just prefer to kind of film here. Um, you know, I'm still kind of figuring out what, what it is that I do and what my channel actually is. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's been a while since I kind of gave an update on things, so here we are. So one of the problems I'm finding with making videos, uh, and just anything in general really, is kind of figuring out um, what it is that I kind of want to make content about, because there is so much stuff, and I'm kind of constantly having this conflict about what I should be putting out there, if I'm oversharing at times, if what I am doing is reflecting um, the kind of content that I want to make. Um, I, th I know that I can be a bit lazy and a bit sloppy at times with certain things, but I guess um, I don't have a great deal of energy to do things and I'm kind of doing it all on my own, so admittedly things aren't always as um, polished or as good as they could be. But with that being said, um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, how things are with the voices or the alters or whatever um, at the moment. Um, I think one issue that I'm finding is that as much as I want to talk about these things I still feel quite a bit of shame around it and because no one's been able to kind of uh, officially kind of tell me what's happening with me part of me feels like I don't have the right to talk about it because it's not kind of officially recognized if that makes sense i'll kind of explain that more um so you know for the last at the very least 15 years i've kind of had a lot of mental health issues and a lot of that started with hearing voices when i was about 11 12 years old um and when i started getting help with that one when i was about 14 um you know, initially I was referred to a service that dealt with psychosis because typically voice hearing, uh, you know, it's kind of associated with um, different psychotic illnesses like schizophrenia, for example. Um, but the the issue was that they they didn't really um, they didn't really think that that was what I was experiencing. They said that I was experiencing psychotic like symptoms, and there were definitely things at that time that that very much mirrored um, a psychotic episode. Uh, for example, Darren, the first voice that uh, was around, you know, he was very angry, he was very demanding, he was very threatening, he made threats against me, he made threats against like, my family or people around me. Um, the kind of things he wanted me to do were very violent and aggressive and you know, if I didn't do them then I would just feel ill all the time because it was like he was in my body making me unwell because I, was, I wasn't listening to him. And which is what prompted me to get help, I, I kept that secret for a good two years. Um, but I've always been very self-aware as well, you know, I've always been very um, introspective and, and all of that, and I think because I could kind of rationalise my experiences, I could kind of look at them and challenge them, maybe, I don't know, I didn't really come across as psychotic or, or schizophrenic, I guess. Um, and the difficult thing here, which I've kind of, it's something that I've... Um, spoken to other people about it because I used to go to a voice hearing group uh, and and one of the kind of common things that, that people would say was that they were often denied help because they seemed too smart, they seemed too, too self-aware um, uh, or that they spoke really well, kind of insinuating that it's people with lower IQs or people who, I don't know, just aren't as intelligent, you know, it's these people that get unwell uh, and because we're quite smart and um, I guess outwardly we don't appear particularly unwell or, or odd um, that we we'll, should just be able to handle these experiences fine um, that's kind of what it seems like um, so yeah I had a lot I had a lot of trouble trying to get like a diagnosis um, uh, and then I think I briefly got diagnosed as having borderline personality disorder but I personally kind of felt that wasn't right. I didn't fit with a lot of the things. I mean, the the 
this, the list of symptoms for BPD is quite broad and, and most people kind of fit into that to a degree um, but yeah it, it, it kind of felt I don't know it didn't it didn't fit it didn't fit with me a lot of the stuff didn't fit and I kind of went back to the uh, psychiatrist at the time and told him that and he, he retracted that uh, that diagnosis which I thought was a bit odd that it kind of just seemed like he was throwing anything at me and you know um, but then we kind of looked at dissociative disorders very briefly we looked at um, we spoke about dissociative identity disorder and he gave me that as a working diagnosis which means it's not official it's not like officially on my records um, but it's kind of like we think that's what the, the, the issue is but they can't exactly state that officially and that was um, kind of tough because like once I'd got that uh, diagnosis I got discharged from the um, psychosis team and uh, I was left on my own I didn't really have any support I just had a leaflet about dissociative disorders and that was that so for me it, I even though I, when I'm I, I want to make more videos about this but part of me feels uncomfortable saying DID um, because um, because I don't have an official diagnosis I kind of almost feel like I'm a fraud that I'm, I'm taking up space from people who have an official diagnosis um, I, that's just my own kind of guilt and shame and all of that uh, leaking in there um, and as well as that you know it's a heavily stigmatized disorder a lot of people don't believe that it's real uh, you know even sort of in the therapeutic community a lot of professionals don't believe that it's real um, as far as I'm aware I don't really think there is a great deal of help for it in the UK there are some organizations um, but I'm, I know near me there, there really isn't anything and uh, when I try and get help through the community mental health team they they won't they won't do anything um I think the last time I saw them they just uh, diagnosed me as having chronic depression which thank you I it's not like I didn't already know that um but then that doesn't explain the voices that doesn't explain why I have these people inside of me who talk to me who periodically take control of my body who kind of share my body with me um all of the confusion, all of the dissociation, all of the kind of memory problems and and how some days um, I can draw and other days I can't draw. It's like there's no consistency and it's very frustrating because it's just like I feel like there are all these people inside of me all with varying degrees of I don't know, cognitive functions and abilities and all of this and I just can't, it, it's very difficult to really do anything because I don't know what I'm going to be like from one day to the next, I don't know what my level of functioning is going to be like, I don't know who's going to be around, I don't know who's going to take charge because the way that it works for me is typically, typically I am in control but it's like there are other people um, kind of watching things happen through my eyes uh, and then occasionally they will kind of take control but it's very much this thing of like I can ultimately get back in control if I need to I don't experience a great deal of amnesia I don't think I do that's kind of you know what makes it difficult um, and I think another reason why I'm kind of uncomfortable at times talking about it is because as well as it being such a stigmatized um, disorder it's also uh, very heavily linked to trauma and abuse whenever you look at anything about DID it's just trauma abuse trauma abuse there's like varying statistics for example I think I read recently like 98% of people with DID have experienced like um, sexual abuse as a child and as far as I'm aware I haven't had that um, and 98% does seem like a very high percentage because I've definitely spoken to people who who, again, like me, don't have that experience or don't feel like they have that experience. And physical abuse as well seems to be quite a, um, a prominent thing. And again, I, I haven't experienced that. I suppose anything that I've experienced that could be seen as traumatic or, you know, could be seen as, um, you know, something that could lead me on to develop the idea, you know, is all quite um, abstract, really. A lot of it is kind of more emotional than than anything else than any other kind of abuse and I wouldn't say abuse I don't know it's I'm not going to go into all of that because it's 
cards but you don't really need to and I don't really need to but either way it's very um it's very difficult when you want to be able to talk about these things and express them with other people but feeling like you feel like you're lying about it and you know from time to time I think to myself why you know I I I I, I don't experience these things I'm, I'm 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 lying I'm making it up I have to be making it up there's no way but then it's like you know I know I've had at least 15 years like this so by now if I was making it up I'm sure I would have stopped because you know I am a 27 year old man living at home um not really able to work or you know hold down a consistent job because because of how my mind works and again I surely surely that's proof should be proof enough to myself you know that I'm not making it up but it's all part of it you know just kind of guilt and confusion it just it's uh I don't know it's just part of it but anyway I kind of uh, that, that, that wasn't what I wanted to talk about I don't think um, now what I wanted to talk about was or update you with is Robin and Robin was the latest to make an appearance um, probably about a year ago now I think it's been 10 months since I made a video on them kind of introducing them and I haven't spoken about them since and I think it's kind of difficult with Robin because with the other guys when they um, appeared you know they were very clear they, they were very distinct I heard them they all had you know their own voices um, as in like for example Dean is American uh, he's from Boston so he's got quite a not particularly strong Boston accent but you know it's there um Ted is kind of more more southern as in southern as in English southern not American southern um so he's a bit more posh so yeah they've all got their own accents that's what the word that's the word I was looking for accents um but with Robin it's kind of hard because I'm still not really sure how old he is um again with the rest of them they all age um so uh, Scott, for example, I think he was 18 when I met him. He is 32 now. Um, so yeah, like each year they do age. They have their own birthdays. They've got, you know, it's, it's very complicated and hard to explain. Um, but Robin is is definitely a child, um, but his age doesn't seem to be very consistent. Like sometimes I would kind of put him around the seven, eight year old mark. Um, sometimes younger, maybe like five. Uh, and then there are other times when he talks and it's he it, it seems a lot older um, I guess just how he speaks uh, um, his vocabulary uh, his understanding of the world feels a lot more mature it doesn't feel like a child and it doesn't sound like a child so with Robin he kind of seems to go up and down on the age ladder and you know he doesn't he, he doesn't talk a lot sometimes um, I think he, he feels uncomfortable around me and to be fair I kind of feel uncomfortable around him and I, I don't really know like the full extent as to why that is. Um, I think just children, there's something that makes me feel very uncomfortable about children, there's something that makes me feel extremely uncomfortable thinking um, about myself as a child um, and there could be numerous reasons for that but that's uh that's by the by um yeah it, it it's just been very hard this year because i've been trying to make progress with him um i have tried doing stuff through lucid dreams which is like one of the things that i have been working on with these guys for a while um but he doesn't seem to turn up in lucid dreams um sometimes he does but he's very blurry i can't make out his face and he doesn't really say anything it's more he'll come and listen to what i have to say and then kind of go um the last few times that i've tried to speak to him in a lucid dream i i haven't really called him forward um because i don't want him to feel like he has to come forward but i just kind of wanted to say to him that i'm here if you need to talk about something or you know the rest of the guys are there um it's kind of letting him come forward in his own time which i, I guess is the only the only thing that i can really do um but i've noticed as well that since he has arrived that a lot of a lot of sensory issues that I experienced as a child have started to kind of come back things that I forgot that I even experienced but yeah I do tend to get these moments of sensory overload where 
like, everything is kind of cranked up to 11, um, like, uh, particularly, like, tactile stuff, so, like, clothes, I can't stand the feeling of different fabrics on my skin, it makes me feel sick, it makes me feel very hot and, like, panicky, um, and these are things that I did experience as a kid, but I kind of blanked them out and ignored them, I never spoke to anybody about them, I never, I think because I had issues communicating it and I had issues with people believing me so um, a lot of that was just kind of like repressed and pushed away so like it's kind of all coming back now all these kind of sensory things and uh, it kind of leads to a lot of meltdowns I've been having a lot of sort of these big emotional kind of meltdowns where um, all I can really do is kind of cry and just silently scream and just get you know just feel very tense and wound up and just frustrated um, and usually in these moments, I, I do end up hurting myself. Like I usually, I'll hit myself or I'll kind of scratch myself. I, I do tend to pull um, my hair out sometimes, not a lot, because <laughs> it's a bit painful. Um, but yeah, I definitely have, and just like, yeah, I kind of, I don't know. In these meltdown moments, that's like the only thing you can do to kind of get through it. It's just there's so much frustration and. Um, talking about it now has, has made me feel very warm and I think I'm going to stop um so yeah that's that's hard it's it's hard because I am trying to get on with my life I am trying to find some consistency and and figure out what it is that I'm even doing and you know it's very hard to maintain a normal life when all of this is going on um so I'm trying my hardest to kind of keep like Robin happy, I guess, and to make him feel safe and comfortable. Um, you know, I've I've tried doing a few different things. I've bought some lights because um, I re- I personally I really I really like colourful bright lights. Um, weirdly, that doesn't set off any sensory issues, but it kind of calms me down. I love colours, I love lights, and Robin seems to really appreciate it as well. So having those has kind of helped to just kind of calm things down to try and create a a space where we feel safe and we feel comfortable um and you know just spending time with the cat um you know at least robin at least robin likes the cat um so that's nice you know just trying to find space for him so yeah i think i've spoken about everything that i wanted to talk about um let me just kind of recap in my mind for myself so I've spoken about uh, dissociative identity disorder and my the possibility of me having that and the shame I feel around that and just the uh, difficulties of getting anyone to take it seriously or to kind of, you know, get doctors, I guess, to to really understand that. I mean, I've, I'm, I'm still in therapy and I'm really grateful for that and it definitely... It definitely does help. It has been helping. Um, so you know, I'm not completely on my own with it. Um, but it's just, it's just frustrating when, like, you just kind of want to get on with with living and and yeah, and and the kind of where I am with Robin at the moment. So, you okay know, all right, um, yeah, that that is it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for getting this far in the video. If you did, uh, I would also greatly appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and liked this video. And of course, all of the usual links will be in the description. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, I've been Max, aka the Ra Ra Rabbit. I'll see you in the next video.